there it is, Joe. The legendary sword of the spirit. They say he who wields the sword is blessed with everlasting Christian channel powers beyond control. They say so much that it could even prevent the apocalypse. Who would have thought that after Jesus' assertion for this ancient artifact, we would have found it right in our very own shed. Wait a minute! It's a trap! I know it's a trap. Wait, but what? Yeah, well, what are we gonna do then? That's what I was gonna ask you. But that doesn't make sense because I just asked you that. Obviously. Because I know the answer. You do? Of course. We've got to swap it out with something of equal moral value. So, the Bible then? No, that's too dense. we got to use something smaller. Like, I got it! The bench is Nazi. The perfect solution. Uh, are you serious right now? Yeah. That's a terrible idea. Too bad, because I'm doing it. Don't you, like, usually hang out on our dumpster or something? Well, you see, it's a long story. It all started a few weeks ago when I was digging your dumpster for my evening coffee when I stumbled across this frog, and he assigned me with guarding this old sword here for the next millennia, and he would set me up with a place in Vegas. Okay, that's the... Can we just take the Sword of the Spirit now? I kind of need it to get my YouTube monetization back. That's okay. Science! You are not worthy! Meteor from heaven! Oh, that's not good. That was a fridge. Oh no! You killed Joe! Come on, mate, he was clearly not worthy. He's played Fortnite for Pete's sake. But I play Fortnite. I seen you play Fortnite. That's not how you play Fortnite. Wow, I honestly don't know if I should feel happy about that or not. Whatever, man. Just, just pass the test and then I can go back to digging your dumpster. I'm getting hungry. It's Adventures in Odyssey, everybody. Adventures in Odyssey is one of those things which, at least for me personally, I wish I could introduce to my non-homeschooled friends, but deep down inside, I know they wouldn't get it. And that's not talking down on them either. What, you think I'd just be like, Hey Pedro, you should totally sit down and listen to this audio-only thingy for like, a lot of hours. Uh, no. It's surprising that an audio drama of all things is one of the three things from my childhood that I can still return to enjoy as a grown adult. Ish. The other two things, of course, being Narnia and VeggieTales, neither of which I've ever really talked about on this channel, but maybe I will? Maybe. I've covered Adventures Odyssey before, the first time being with an old episode of Vincent's, where I attempt to analyze the Imagination Station from a scientific point of view. And more recently, when I reviewed an old Adventures Odyssey PC game, Adventures Odyssey Treasure of the Incas. While researching that video, however, I found that there is in fact a second Adventures Odyssey game, Adventures Odyssey Sword of the Spirit. I'ma just play it now. So this game starts out kinda similar to the last one, and whoo boy, I forgot just how wacky the animation these games were. What's that, Wit? Uh, I'm not sure, some kind of package from Marty. Oh, and here's a note. What, what is it? It appears he's in some sort of trouble. Look at Connie and Eugene's face here. They're just like, oh boy, danger. I, I can't tell if this is the face of concern or excitement right now. So the story premise is actually pretty complicated to explain, so I'm just gonna let Mr. Whitaker explain it. I was carrying our old family painting to the car when it started to rain. I took the painting to Gustav Schmidt to be restored. He's very expensive. As Gustav worked on the painting, I thought I saw some images start to appear that weren't there before. Like a fool, I did, but I returned within the hour. I was determined to get my painting back. The images I saw were gone. Gustav was angry. He said he needed more time to finish. I took the painting, but I believe I may be in danger now. And so, I'm sending this painting to you for safekeeping. Please see if there's some way you can restore the hidden images. And thank you for keeping this all confidential. Oh. 
Whoops, probably should have read it first before reading it out loud. Oopsie. And this concludes my extensive and frankly embarrassing confession. P.S. Please don't read this to the entire homeschooled nerd fan bit. Oh. Are we live right now? I'm gonna need some help to figure this out. Speaking on behalf of Miss Kendall, she and I would be glad to assist you, Mr. Whitaker. I'll employ the datacom and peruse the Odyssey web portal to discover any connections between Odyssey history and this painting. I believe it may prove helpful. Thank you, Eugene. This is making me uncomfortable. Connie, could you, Connie, could you stop that? Like, right now, please? So anywho, Wit and Gang decide it's time for some super sleuthing. Thus begins the first gameplay, just like last time. Wit is on the scanner doing some epic photoshopping, while Connie does research on the wikis, which, once again, is a lot of this. Look at all these topics. Yes, it's becoming clear now. These are Greek letters. Nine to be exact. And if my Greek is correct, the word is exipireto. I believe exipireto is translated to serve. That is, to serve as a soldier serves. Why, yes, that's exactly what that means, actually. Fortunately for me, however, this time around, these gameplay segments don't continue for half the game, like last time. Thank goodness. But then, just as they're discussing what to do next, our heroes get a mysterious phone call from a bad dude. If you want to see Marty again, meet me at the Twin Hills Mine. All three of you. Or you'll be responsible for what happens to Marty. And don't try calling the police. Wait, who is this? I told you, stop calling me. I don't, just do whatever with Marty. I don't care. Kids these days. So our heroes head to a cavern where they met with Gustav Schmidt, who's probably Odyssey's most over-the-top villain to date. It appears we are to stand in certain positions. I don't feel good about this. This could be a trap. <laughs> you are one perceptive fellow, and you will lead me to the treasure. What have you done with Marty? Marty is, shall we say, tied up right now. Um, yeah, he's literally tied up. There is no, shall we say, dude. That's, that's what he is. Why is bad guys always use that line, it's so lame. Ah, Chip, she beat me to it. I gotta say, the voice acting in this game is one of the strongest parts of these games. It feels exactly like listening to an episode of Adventures in Odyssey, except for Gustav who. Silence! It is now time for you three to take on the gauntlet of virtues and find the sword. Marty's future depends on it. What's going on right- <laughs> And thus begins some more gameplay, and while I know I said I was glad to not be stuck with the same kind of gameplay as last time, gonna be honest, this time around, it's worse. Doesn't start out bad, this part with the ball rolling is actually fun. Granted, I kinda regretted using a laptop play a lot of times, I'd accidentally click which pauses the board, and then watch helplessly as the ball goes into the hole. I... I probably should've worded that differently, actually. I get it. You love skee-ball. But then starts the platform which at first I was excited for, but then holy crud, how am I supposed to remember all these controls? Why not just show me what all the buttons do? This is written so confusingly. Also, there's no way to see the controls once you start, meaning if you accidentally click away, you won't be able to see how to control the game unless you exit the game and start over again. So, I didn't even know you could run, which somehow didn't keep me from, albeit very slowly, completing half of Connie's levels, which consisted of a lot of this. <laughs> That's the way. No kidding. Parts of this are actually geniusly thought of. For instance, this part where you have to wait here at the edge and not do anything until this wind comes and case you the top. Patience. I gotta say, Mr. McAllister is one bad father. He set up his entire cave with dangerous cliffs, bats, underwater boulders rolling around. To what, make sure his kids were patient? I mean, I'm having a little trouble with that, not gonna lie. I mean, what the heck even is this? Why am I running on wind? And more importantly, how am I running on wind? Well, this is an odd puzzle. Guess I'll just have to make a leap for it. Cool! I passed the test of patience! Oh, I can't wait to tell Wit! Hold on! I can wait. I've got patience. The rest of the game consists of either puzzle segments or platforming. The puzzles really aren't that challenging or difficult, and the platforming is mostly just infuriating to play through as any misstep will result in having to do the whole thing over again. 
Okay, that one wasn't my fault. There are so many times where you have to do everything just right. For instance, here, if you're not facing the right way on this diving board, you'll just go flying off into the endless chasm. That apparently did not work. Why is all this so particular? How am I supposed to know how all this is done? And now, what the heck, Eugene swimming in an underground cavern with a bunch of boulders? What is this? Why is this? I do believe that was rather entertaining. Even, dare I say, fun? No, it's not! And now, what the heck? Can't he play the minecart levels from Donkey Kong Country? Except in this case, you gotta keep flipping levers by throwing rocks at the perfect time and hoping that you find the exit to what? Teach me self-control? I'll show you self-control! No. Must contain it. Mustn't break. So after finally making it through the final challenge, our heroes make it to the end where they are greeted by the last of Mr. McAllister's records. Something about the final challenge being love or something, I don't know. Last test will prove the most important virtue. The virtue of love. Don't worry guys, I got this. I mean, at this point, I've pretty much gotten through every single trial of the spirit, so, you know, I think this love thing shouldn't be too big a deal. I think, to borrow from the colloquialism, we have this in the proverbial bag. Wit. Connie. Eugene. I wanted to personally thank all of you for helping me. I'm delivering as promised. Marty has served his purpose. Marty, are you all right? I feel like sunshine right now. The sword is mine. Mr. McCalty's a Gustav, don't be a fool. Grab this rope and save yourself. The mine is collapsing. We have to get out of here. No. We can't leave Gustav. We leave Gustav. So our heroes make it out of the cave somehow. Seriously, even Connie doesn't know how exactly. I don't know how, but we made it. Marty, by your willingness to rescue Gustav, you've exemplified the most important virtue of them all. Here, this is rightfully yours. He gets a sword and spear. I was the one. I went through case. I literally was running on the wind. I had to sneak fast bats. I just go underground in caves, swim in the water away from boulders. And then you tell me, oh, this this spineless sea sponge. He's gonna get the sword and spear because he wouldn't let Gustav to his death. I would have. I would have saved him too. I don't need this guy. We we don't need this guy. I earned that sword fair and square. Throughout this game, I had every ounce of patience and self-control in me tested to their ultimate limits. And this is all I get for it? That's it! I'm angry now! Man, I feel like my soul has been freed right now. These Odyssey games are both super infuriating to play. And despite this first one being a lot of fun to play, I think the second one was the better game. The first one definitely had a lot of great ideas though, like the idea of a platformer I thought was pretty intriguing. Granted, it wasn't implemented well, but still, props for trying on this one. But the actual gameplay, unfortunately, just isn't that good or fun. But not gonna lie, after playing through both of these, I kind of want to see more adventures in Odyssey video games. Probably we never will see anything, but if they do, I just hope that next time they bring in someone who's had a little more experience with games. I'm talking to you folks on the family. Call me. So you were old man, I got through the game. Does that mean now I've earned the Sword of Spirit and all that Christian channel power that comes with it? Well, I've put a lot of thought into this, and I believe the only one who truly has earned the sword is Joe. What? I thought he was dead. Oh, look at this new butt scratcher. I'm gonna try this out right oh. away. Well, I guess that's what I get for trying. Oh! Oh man! Oh! Ow! Oh, that's that's actually pretty sharp. Oh! I thought it wouldn't be sharp because it was rusty. Don't worry, he's fine. I didn't know I had red pants. I do believe that was rather entertaining. <laughs> Hey you! Want to see more videos? Then be sure to push that subscribe button and hit the notification bell. And if you want to watch some more videos right now, you can check out the last episode of Homeschool Nerd Show I did on The Incredibles Games. Video games. Or you can check out the top 10 video I did recently on the top 10 3DS games. And of course, if you haven't already joined our Discord server, you can hang out with other fans of Homeschool Nerd. It's real good.